The air was crisp with the scent of pine needles and damp earth, a sharp contrast to the exhaust fumes that belched from my beat-up jeep as I wrestled the last of the climbing gear into the back. The sky, a vast expanse of blue tinged with the gray promise of an Alaskan winter, mirrored the excitement churning in my gut. I, Marco, am a geologist, a man driven by an insatiable curiosity about the Earth's secrets, a hunger to explore the hidden wonders that lay buried beneath layers of rock and ice. I'd spent years studying seismic activity, mapping fault lines, and chasing volcanic eruptions, drawn to the raw power of nature, the beauty of its hidden designs. But my true passion, the thing that set my soul on fire, was caves. The darkness, the silence, the unknown depths that beckoned with promises of discovery, they were a siren song I couldn't resist. Today's expedition was different. It wasn't a scientific survey, not a funded exploration. This was a personal quest, a journey into the heart of a mystery that had gripped the small town of Sidescape Hollows, where I'd settled after years of roaming the globe, chasing tremors and whispers of ancient geological events. A few weeks ago, a group of local adventurers, led by a woman named Jess, had stumbled upon a hidden cave entrance in the foothills of the Kairath Mountains, a range that shadowed the town, their peaks a jagged silhouette against the ever-changing Alaskan sky. It's like nothing we've ever seen before, Marco, Jess had said, her eyes wide with excitement, her voice a hushed whisper as she showed me the photos she'd taken of the cave's entrance. The rock formations. The colors. There's something different about this place. Her words, fueled by her own fascination with the unknown, resonated with the whispers that had been circulating in Sciescape Hollows. Tales of strange lights seen flickering in the mountains, of unsettling sounds echoing from the depths of the earth, of a darkness that lingered in those ancient peaks. The townsfolk, a mix of rugged individualists and those who sought solace in the remote corners of the world, had their own stories, legends passed down through generations, tales of spirits that haunted the Kirath Mountains, of ancient beings that slumbered beneath the earth their dreams weaving nightmares into the fabric of reality. I had dismissed such tales as folklore, as superstition, the ramblings of minds unsettled by the vast wilderness that surrounded us. But the photos Jess had shown me, the strange swirling patterns on the cave walls, the eerie luminescence that seemed to emanate from the depths, stirred a curiosity, a primal unease that I couldn't ignore. I agreed to join Jess and her team on their next expedition. I packed my gear climbing ropes, harnesses, helmets, a geologist's hammer, a notebook filled with blank pages, eager to record my observations, to document the secrets that this hidden cave system, this gateway into the unknown, promised to reveal. As we drove out of Sciescape Hollows, the town shrinking behind us, the jeep bouncing along the rough dirt road that led towards the foothills, a sense of anticipation, mingled with a prickle of apprehension, settled upon me. The whispers, faint and fleeting at first, started as we entered the shadow of the Kyrath Mountains, their voices a low, sibilant murmur that seemed to drift on the wind, their words indistinct, yet their tone filled with a chilling curiosity. He knows you're coming. He's been waiting. Beware the darkness below. I tried to shake off the whispers, to attribute them to the wind whistling through the pines, to the creaking of the old jeep, to the tricks that an overactive imagination could play in the silence of the wilderness. But their presence lingered, a subtle unease that settled upon me like the shadows that stretched long and dark across the mountain slopes, a premonition of the secrets that awaited us in the depths of the earth. The jeep crawled to a stop at the base of a steep rocky slope the engine sputtering a final sigh of relief as we reached the trailhead. The whispers, louder now, seemed to press against the windows, their voices a chorus of unseen watchers, their tone a mix of curiosity and malice. He senses you. He's waiting. Turn back. We gathered our gear, the weight of ropes and harnesses a familiar comfort against the growing unease. Jess, her face flushed with excitement, 
her eyes sparkling with a thrill-seeker's gleam, grinned at me. Ready for this, Marco? She asked, her voice a breath of fresh air against the whispers that now seemed to cling to the shadows of the Kyrith Mountains. I nodded, forcing a smile. Though the unsettling feeling that we were stepping into something far beyond a simple cave exploration lingered, a dark premonition that shadowed our enthusiasm. We shouldered our packs and followed a narrow trail that wound through a dense thicket of pines, their branches interlocked overhead, creating a canopy of shadows that deepened as we ventured further into the heart of the mountains. The air grew colder, the scent of pine needles and damp earth mingling with that strange metallic tang that had become a harbinger of unease. The entrance to the cave, hidden behind a veil of moss and tangled roots, yawned open, a black abyss that seemed to swallow the light. A chill wind, carrying the scent of damp earth and something else. A subtle, sulfurous aroma that prickled my nostrils. Blew from the cave's mouth, as if warning us, urging us back towards the familiar world of sunlight and reason. Gloom gullet, Jess said, her voice a hushed whisper as she pointed towards the cave entrance. The name, a local legend, whispered in hushed tones sending a shiver down my spine. That's what the old-timers called it, she explained, her gaze fixed on the cave's shadowy mouth. They said it was a place where darkness lived, where souls were lost. I dismissed her words as folklore, as superstition, though a primal unease, a sense of stepping into a realm beyond the reach of science and logic, tightened its grip on my gut. We rigged our ropes, the familiar routine a comfort in the face of the unknown. Jess, a seasoned climber, led the way, her headlamp cutting through the gloom, its beam revealing a vast, cavernous space that seemed to swallow the sound, the light, the very air we breathed. The cave walls, a tapestry of swirling patterns and shimmering colors, glistened with an eerie luminescence, as though lit from within, their beauty a stark contrast to the whispers that now echoed around us their voices amplified by the cavern's vastness, their tone a chilling mixture of curiosity and malice. He welcomes you. He's been waiting. He knows your secrets. We rappelled down, the ropes slipping through our gloved hands, the descent a slow, deliberate dance against the backdrop of the cavern's unsettling beauty. The air grew colder, the metallic tang intensifying, mingling with the damp earth and the sulfurous aroma, a cocktail of scents that hinted at a darkness far beyond the realm of geological formations. We reached the cavern floor, a jumble of boulders and loose scree, the ground cold and damp beneath our boots. The whispers swirled around us, their voices a dissonant chorus, a symphony of whispers that seemed to emanate from the very stones themselves. Jess, her headlamp beam sweeping the cavern's walls, her eyes wide with excitement, let out a gasp. Look, she exclaimed, her voice echoing in the vast space. Carvings, ancient carvings. I followed her gaze, my own headlamp illuminating a section of the cave wall where a series of intricate symbols etched into the rock with a precision that defied the primitive tools of ancient cultures pulsed with an eerie luminescence. The symbols, unlike anything I'd encountered before, seemed to writhe and shift in the flickering light, their lines a cryptic language that whispered of a past, a knowledge, a power, that was both alluring and terrifying. The whispers intensified, their voices a chorus of warnings and promises. He speaks. He remembers. He hungers. The cave, its beauty a mask for its secrets, had revealed a glimpse of its true nature, a darkness that defied the laws of geology. A mystery that I, Marco, the scientist, the skeptic, now found myself drawn to. A moth to a flame. A traveler on a perilous journey into the heart of the unknown. The cavern, a symphony of shadows and whispers, pressed in on us. The air thick with a cold, unsettling energy. The symbols on the wall pulsed with an eerie luminescence. Their cryptic language a haunting reminder of the ancient presence that slumbered beneath the Kairath Mountains. The rest of Jess's team, Two seasoned adventurers named Kale and Lyra stood beside us, their faces a mixture of awe and apprehension, their headlamps casting dancing beams that illuminated the cavern's vastness, its unsettling beauty. What do you make of them, Marco? 
Jess asked, her voice a hushed whisper that echoed in the vast silence. Those symbols, they're like nothing I've ever seen before. I ran my fingers along the rough surface of the carvings, their lines cold and sharp beneath my touch, the whispers intensifying, their voices swirling around us, a chorus of unseen watchers. They're remarkable, I said, my voice echoing in the cavern's stillness. They predate any known indigenous culture in this region. The style, the precision, it's unlike anything I've encountered before. I pulled out my notebook, the pages blank, eager to capture the details of this discovery, to decipher the symbol's meaning, to unravel the story they whispered. But as I reached for my pen, a sound, a low, mournful cry, echoed through the cavern, a chilling dissonance against the rhythmic drip of water and the whispers that now seemed to be laced with a palpable fear. Did you hear that? Kale asked, his voice a nervous tremor, his gaze darting towards the shadowy recesses of the cavern, as if expecting something to emerge from the darkness. Just the wind. I said, forcing a calmness I didn't entirely feel, though the cry, a sound that seemed both human and other, had sent a shiver down my spine. But even as I spoke, the cry echoed again, closer this time, a mournful wail that seemed to seep from the very walls of the cave, a symphony of whispers, their voices a chorus of sorrow and despair. Lyra, her face pale, her hand gripping Kale's arm, whispered, There's something down here. I can feel it. Jess, ever the adventurer, her eyes gleaming with a mixture of fear and excitement, shook her head. It's just the acoustics, Lyra, she said, her voice a forced reassurance. The caves, they play tricks on your mind. But as we continued our exploration of Gloom Gullet, the whispers growing louder, the metallic tang in the air intensifying, a sense of dread, a premonition of something sinister, settled upon us like a shroud. The sounds, the echoes, became more frequent, more unsettling. Whispers morphed into guttural growls, into the sound of heavy footsteps echoing on unseen paths, into the chilling laughter of unseen entities that seemed to mock our presence, our intrusion into their domain. And then, Jess, her headlamp beam sweeping across a narrow, shadowy fissure in the cavern wall, froze her breath catching in her throat, her eyes wide with terror. There, she whispered, her voice a strangled gasp. I saw something, moving, in the darkness. We rushed to her side, our headlamps illuminating the fissure, its depths a black abyss that seemed to swallow the light. But there was nothing there, just the jagged rock, the swirling shadows, and the whispers, their voices now a chilling chorus of denial. Nothing. There's nothing there. You're imagining things. But Jess, her gaze fixed on the fissure, her body trembling, shook her head. No, she whispered, her voice filled with a chilling certainty. It was there. I saw it. A shadow. Tall and slender. Its eyes glowing red. Watching us. Her words, a chilling testament to the darkness that lurked within Gloomgullet, sent a wave of icy fear through me. The cave, once a source of wonder and excitement, now felt like a trap. Its beauty a mask for a sinister secret. Its whispers a warning we had ignored. We pressed onward, deeper into the cave system. The whispers our constant companions. Their voices a haunting reminder that we were not alone. That something ancient and evil, something awakened by our presence, was watching us waiting for its moment to strike. The air grew heavy, the silence more oppressive, as we ventured deeper into the labyrinthine heart of Gloomgullet. The whispers were a constant presence now, their voices swirling around us, a chilling symphony of unseen watchers. The metallic tang, the scent of decay, the sulfurous aroma, all intensified, a cocktail of primal fear that clung to our skin a warning we couldn't ignore. Jess, shaken by her encounter with the shadow in the fissure, stayed close to Kale, her hand gripping his arm, her gaze darting nervously from shadow to shadow. 
Lyra, ever the pragmatist, kept her headlamp beam focused on the path ahead, her expression stoic, though I could sense the tremor in her hands, the fear that lurked beneath her calm facade. We followed a narrow tunnel that twisted and turned, the path ahead illuminated by the dancing beams of our headlamps, the darkness beyond our light a swirling abyss of whispers and shadows. The tunnel opened into a large chamber, its ceiling low, its air thick with the scent of damp earth and decay. And there, in the center of the chamber, bathed in the eerie glow of our headlamps, we saw it. A village. Not a modern village of houses and streets, but an ancient settlement carved into the very rock of the cavern. Its dwellings a series of interconnected chambers and tunnels, their walls adorned with faded paintings and intricate carvings. This, this is incredible, I whispered, my voice a hushed echo in the cavern's stillness. An entire village, hidden beneath the earth, preserved for centuries. The whispers, their voices a mix of awe and fear, swirled around us, their words a haunting reminder of the secrets this place held. He remembers. He was here. He watched them. We explored the village, our flashlight beams illuminating the remnants of a lost civilization. We found tools and weapons crafted from bone and stone, pottery shards adorned with intricate patterns, and remnants of clothing woven from animal hides, all remarkably well preserved, as though frozen in time, a testament to the cave's ability to shield its secrets from the ravages of the world above. In one chamber, we discovered a collection of small carved figurines, their features delicate, their expressions haunting. They depicted human figures, their limbs elongated, their eyes wide and staring, their bodies contorted in poses that suggested a ritualistic dance, a plea to the unseen forces that ruled this subterranean realm. They're beautiful, Lyra said, her voice hushed as she examined one of the figurines its smooth, cold surface a stark contrast to the warmth of her touch. And unsettling. It's as if they're watching us. Her words, a chilling echo of the whispers that now seemed to emanate from the figurines themselves, sent a shiver down my spine. The air in the chamber grew colder, the metallic tang intensifying, the whispers a chorus of voices that seemed to mock our curiosity, our intrusion into their ancient domain. He sees you, he hears you, he's coming. We moved deeper into the village, following a winding tunnel that led to a massive stone door, its surface carved with intricate symbols that mirrored those we had seen at the cavern entrance. The door, sealed with heavy iron bars, stood at the entrance to a large central chamber, its presence a forbidding barrier against the unknown. What do you think lies beyond that door, Marco? Jess asked, her voice a nervous tremor. I stared at the door, its symbols pulsing with an eerie luminescence in the flickering light of our headlamps, the whispers intensifying, their voices a symphony of warning and a strange, seductive allure. I don't know, I replied, my voice a hushed whisper. But I have a feeling. We're about to find out. The massive stone door, its surface a canvas of swirling symbols, pulsed with an eerie blue light, the whispers emanating from its depths growing louder, more insistent. The air around the door felt charged, the metallic tang thick and cloying, a taste of ancient magic and forgotten fear. Jess, her face pale, her voice a hushed whisper, touched my arm. Maybe we should leave it alone, Marco, she said, her gaze flickering nervously between the door and the shadowy recesses of the tunnel. Those carvings... Those whispers. I don't like this. Kale, ever the pragmatist, grunted. We've come this far, Jess, he said, his voice a low rumble. We can't turn back now. We have to see what's behind that door. Lyra, her gaze fixed on the symbols, her brow furrowed in concentration, nodded in agreement. There's something significant about this place, Marco, she said, her voice hushed. Those carvings... They tell a story. We need to understand it. I stepped closer to the door, its cold stone radiating an unnatural warmth, 
the whispers swirling around me, their voices a chilling symphony of warnings and promises. He's waiting. He's watching. The gateway. The truth. The power. I examined the door's locking mechanism, a complex arrangement of metal gears and levers that seemed more akin to a puzzle box than a simple lock. The whispers intensified, their voices urging me to solve it, to unlock the secrets hidden behind the stone. He wants you to open it. He welcomes you. I worked the mechanism, my fingers tracing the cold metal, the ancient gears grinding and groaning in protest, their movement a jarring intrusion into the cavern's silence. And then, with a click that echoed through the chamber, the lock yielded, the heavy iron bars that sealed the door retracting with a shriek of metal against stone, a sound that seemed to shatter the fragile barrier between our world and the darkness beyond. The door swung open, revealing a chamber unlike any I had ever seen. It was a perfect circle, its walls smooth and black, as though carved from a single piece of obsidian, its ceiling lost in the shadows, its floor a mosaic of intricate patterns that shimmered with an eerie luminescence. A single shaft of moonlight, filtering through a hidden opening in the cavern ceiling, illuminated the chamber, its beam falling upon a large mural that covered the far wall. The mural, painted in vibrant colors that seemed to defy the passage of time, depicted a celestial alignment, stars and planets arranged in a pattern that was both beautiful and unsettling. And in the center of the alignment, a swirling vortex of energy, its colors shifting and pulsating, drew my gaze, its presence a palpable force, a whisper against my soul. The Chamber of Whispers, Jess whispered, her voice trembling, her eyes wide with a mixture of awe and fear. The old timers, they talked about this place. They said it was a gateway to another realm. Her words, echoing the whispers that now swirled around us, intensified the sense of unease that had settled upon us, a chilling premonition of the darkness that we had unwittingly unleashed. The air in the chamber grew heavy, the metallic tang now a suffocating presence, the whispers a cacophony of voices that seemed to emanate from the mural itself, from the swirling vortex of energy, from the very depths of the earth. He's here. He's awake. He's angry. And as we stood there, mesmerized by the mural's beauty, a cold dread washed over me, a chilling certainty that we had crossed a threshold, a point of no return, that the secrets hidden within this chamber, the whispers that now consumed us, would forever change our lives, our perceptions, our very souls. The air in the chamber of whispers pulsed with an unseen energy, the whispers swirling around us, their voices a cacophony of fear and madness. The scent of lavender and decay, a cloying sweetness that had haunted us throughout our descent, now filled the chamber, thick and suffocating, a palpable manifestation of the darkness that had been awakened. The mural on the wall, illuminated by the shaft of moonlight, seemed to writhe and shift before our eyes, its colors pulsating, its celestial alignment drawing us into its vortex of swirling energy, a gateway to a realm beyond our comprehension. We stood frozen, our headlamps casting dancing shadows that stretched and contorted on the chamber walls, the whispers echoing in our minds, a chorus of warnings and promises that whispered of both wonder and despair. He's here. He's awake. He's angry. Jess, her face pale, her hand trembling, clutched at my arm. I... I don't like this, Marco, she whispered, her voice a strained tremor against the backdrop of the whisper's chaotic symphony. This place, it feels wrong. We should leave. But even as she spoke, I knew it was too late. We had crossed a threshold, disturbed an ancient balance, awakened a force that we could no longer control. Kale, his gaze fixed on the mural, a flicker of fear in his eyes, shook his head. We can't leave, Jess he said, his voice a low rumble. We've come too far. We have to see this through. Lyra, her usual stoicism replaced by a wide-eyed wonder, stepped closer to the mural, her hand reaching out as if to touch its swirling colors, its pulsating energy. It's... 
beautiful, she whispered, her voice a hypnotic murmur that mirrored the whisper's seductive allure. Don't you see, Marco? It's a map, a guide to another world. I grabbed her arm, pulling her back from the mural, its colors now swirling faster, its energy pulsing with an intensity that made my head spin. Don't, Lyra, I warned, my voice a low growl. This place, it's dangerous. We need to be careful. But even as I spoke, the whispers intensified, their voices echoing in my own mind, my own curiosity battling against the primal fear that gnawed at my gut. He wants you to see. He wants you to understand. He wants you to join him. The chamber seemed to shift and distort around us, the walls closing in, the shadows deepening, the air growing thick and heavy, the scent of lavender and decay overwhelming. And then the hallucinations began. Jess screamed, her voice a piercing wail that echoed through the chamber, her eyes wide with terror as she pointed towards a shadowy corner. It's, it's there, she shrieked, her voice a mixture of fear and a strange manic excitement. The shadow, the one with the red eyes, it's watching us, it's coming. But when I turned to look, my flashlight beam illuminating the corner, there was nothing there, just the smooth black obsidian wall, its surface shimmering with an eerie luminescence. There's nothing there, Jess, I said, my voice a reassuring rumble though a shiver of fear ran down my spine. It's just... the shadows. But Jess, her gaze still fixed on the empty corner, her body trembling, shook her head. No, she whispered, her voice filled with a chilling certainty. It's there. I can... I can feel it. Watching us. And then, Kale, his face pale, his eyes wide with terror, pointed towards the ceiling, his voice a strangled gasp. The stars, they're moving, they're, they're aligning, just like in the mural. I glanced upward, my heart pounding in my chest. The moonlight, streaming through the opening in the cavern ceiling, had shifted, its beam now illuminating a different section of the mural, its celestial alignment pulsing with a blue light that mirrored the whisper's hypnotic rhythm. And as I watched, mesmerized by the mural's unsettling beauty, I felt a cold dread wash over me, a chilling certainty that the stars, the planets, the very fabric of reality itself were shifting, aligning, responding to the ancient power we had awakened. The air crackled with energy, the whispers a deafening roar, the chamber a vortex of fear and madness. We were trapped, our minds unraveling, our perceptions distorted, our souls tethered to the darkness we had unleashed. And as the ground beneath our feet began to tremble, the whispers chanting a final chilling warning, I knew that Gloomgullet, the cave we had entered with such curiosity, such hope of discovery, was now a tomb, a prison, a gateway to a realm of shadows and nightmares from which there might be no escape. He's angry. He's hungry. He's awakening. The whispers became screams a chorus of torment that echoed through the chamber as the ground beneath our feet buckled and heaved. The air crackled with energy, the scent of lavender and decay so overpowering it was almost impossible to breathe. The mural on the wall pulsed with a blinding blue light, its celestial alignment swirling, its vortex of energy expanding, reaching out towards us like a grasping hand. Panic seized us, our rational minds crumbling under the assault of the supernatural. Jess, her eyes wide with terror, stumbled back, tripping over a loose stone, her headlamp falling to the floor, its beam extinguished, leaving her shrouded in darkness. We have to get out of here, Kale shouted, his voice a frantic cry against the cacophony of whispers and the groaning of the cave. The whole place is going to collapse. He grabbed Jess's hand, pulling her to her feet, his gaze darting towards the chamber's exit, the tunnel we had emerged from now a shrinking pinpoint of light in the encroaching darkness. Lyra, her face ashen, but her voice surprisingly calm, pointed towards the ceiling. The opening, she shouted. We can climb out. It's our only chance. She scrambled towards a pile of rubble that lay beneath the shaft of moonlight, 
its beam now a spotlight on the mural's swirling vortex. The whispers intensified, their voices a torrent of fear and madness. He's angry. He won't let you escape. The air grew colder, the metallic tang thick and heavy, as if the very essence of the cave, the ancient entity that slumbered beneath the Kyrath Mountains, was seeping into the chamber, its presence a suffocating weight. We clambered over the rubble, our movements frantic, our breaths coming in ragged gasps. Lyra, her climbing skills honed by years of experience, scaled the rough rock face with a speed that defied the treacherous footing, the whispers a constant torment, their voices urging her upward, then shifting, their tone changing to a mocking laughter. Too late. He's coming. You can't escape. Kale and Jess followed, their movements less sure, their fear palpable in their strained breaths and the frantic scrabbling of their boots against the rock. I reached the opening, the shaft of moonlight a beacon of hope, the fresh air a welcome relief against the suffocating atmosphere of the chamber. But as I hauled myself up, my gaze fell upon the mural, its colors now a blinding whirl, its vortex of energy expanding, reaching towards the opening as if trying to follow us, to escape its subterranean prison. And then, I saw it. A shadow, darker than the surrounding darkness, emerged from the swirling vortex, its form elongated, its eyes burning with a crimson fire that mirrored the whisper's malicious glee. He's coming. He's free. A wave of terror, a primal instinct to flee, surged through me. I scrambled out of the opening, the ground solid beneath my feet, the moonlight a cold, comforting embrace. Kale and Jess emerged behind me, their faces pale, their eyes wide with terror. But Lyra, her hand reaching for the edge of the opening, her gaze fixed on the mural's swirling vortex, her voice a hypnotic whisper, hesitated. Lyra, come on, Kale shouted, his voice a desperate plea. It's not safe. But Lyra, her eyes glazed, her movements slow and deliberate, shook her head. He's, he's calling to me, she whispered, her voice a distant echo in the wind. He, he wants me to stay. And then, as we watched in horror, the shadow emerged fully from the vortex, its form solidifying, its eyes burning brighter, its presence a suffocating weight that pressed down on us, a wave of cold, ancient power. The ground trembled, the opening began to collapse, the whispers a deafening roar of triumph and despair. Kale grabbed my arm, pulling me away from the edge, his voice a desperate command. We have to go, Marco, he shouted. Now! We fled the sound of the collapsing cave echoing behind us, the whispers fading, the shadow's presence diminishing as we scrambled through the narrow tunnels, the rising water at our heels, a relentless pursuer. I was the last to emerge from the cave, the sunlight blinding, the air a symphony of freedom and a chilling emptiness. I turned, my gaze drawn back to the cave's collapsing entrance, its darkness a gaping maw that seemed to whisper a final chilling farewell. And there, in the depths of the collapsing tunnel, illuminated by a final flicker of blue light, I saw it. The shadow, its eyes burning with a cold crimson fire, its form a silhouette against the encroaching darkness, stood watching us, its presence a haunting reminder of the secrets we had uncovered, the ancient evil we had awakened. I turned and ran, my heart pounding in my chest, the whispers a distant echo in the wind, the metallic tang a lingering taste on my tongue. I left Gloomgullet behind, its darkness sealed, its secrets buried. But I knew with a chilling certainty that the whispers would follow me, the shadows would haunt my dreams, a constant reminder of the fragile veil between our world and the realms beyond, a veil that we, in our arrogance, our thirst for knowledge, our insatiable curiosity, had torn open. Back in Sizecape Hollows I tried to forget, to bury the memories of Gloomgullet, the horrors we had witnessed, the darkness that had clung to us seeped into our souls. But the whispers persisted, a faint murmur at the edge of my hearing, a constant reminder of the unseen world, the ancient entity that awaited its moment to break free. And when I opened my notebook, 
its pages blank. The ink vanished, the memories erased. I knew with a chilling certainty that the darkness we had encountered in Gloomgullet had followed us home, that the past had a way of rewriting the present.